Welcome back everybody. This is episode 16 of my Transport Fever series. Uh, this episode is probably going to be a little bit shorter. I just want to sort of show off what I've done since the last, uh, the last little episode I had out. Um, as you can see, we've moved down to uh, Margate and have started uh, building it up. Uh, yeah, pretty much destroyed all of it except for a few buildings here. That way the city will uh, grow back. Oh, let me uh, close that out real quick. And again, uh, I've really taken to uh, this elevated highway going through our cities. Um, just because it keeps the uh, auto like building town uh, from creating new connections to it. Uh, it doesn't seem to build up. Uh, connections to elevated areas um, so yeah it, it just keeps this nice and tidy and as a uh, fast thoroughfare um, for anything that might be going between cities or uh, even going from one side of the city to the other um, again uh, sort of like how we did over in uh, yeah Hingham we've got a dedicated area for a rail coming in at the back side of the town and uh, the uh, lines, you know, run along the hill here, which is pretty cool. And I'm kind of looking forward to riding along on the train along here. I may do that in this episode just to sort of pad it out a little bit because it is going to be a little bit shorter. Uh, but yeah, so if we take a look at our little transport hub area. Uh, for the first time, I'm using just the passenger station, uh, which will be handling our freight drop-offs and passenger drop-off and pickup. Now when you use a passenger station for your freight line, uh, the freight trains can only drop off and nothing will be stored here for pickup. Um, but that's okay because there shouldn't be anything coming into Margit uh, that will be put back out onto the line for other towns. Um, and this was a little cramped back here for trying to fit in a separate uh, passenger and freight station. So this works out okay. Uh, now down here in front you can see we've got a little parking lot area and then if I uh, bring up the line manager uh, you can see where a bus line comes through here. And another thing that I'm doing for the first time in Margit is I'm starting to play around with the electric trams. So I've got this mod modded uh, train station here which gives me an attached tram platform which is really cool. So I've got a, a, tram a couple tram routes that come down through the city uh, and then down here to this little uh, sort of transfer point down here and then around through the city in a few areas. So we've got a few trams that will be on that and uh, take a look at those actually. Um, this should be pretty cool. Uh, and then another thing I've done in Margit is I've gone ahead, gone ahead and added a dock. I'm actually going to have just some passenger uh, ferries coming up and down between Margate, Rumford, and uh, Lichlid. Lichlid? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Lichlid, maybe? Let's call it Lichlid. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just going to have a few little passenger ferries coming along through here. I may even put uh, a couple docks over this way for a uh, multi. Uh, maybe rip on, but probably not. I may I may hook up Multi, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, those lines probably won't be profitable, especially once the uh, passenger line uh, train lines are set up between these towns. Um, but it'll add just a little bit of flavor to the world, and uh, I don't know. Hopefully, look kind of cool. Plus, I do want to see the boats. Um, again, even if they're not profitable, I, I do just want to use them. But yeah, so unfortunately, uh, this part of the road sort of got, uh, yeah, it, it got the uh, ground under it. Um, so it's not elevated right here, but it's okay. Uh, it's so compact right here that um, the uh, city, like, auto builder shouldn't try to make connections or anything weird up here. So that should be okay. I do wish it was elevated all the way, just like, uh, to make it, you know, more uniform. But that's okay. And uh, I've got plenty of room out here to the uh, south of Margit um, to expand it should this town start building up. <clears throat> and then something I want to mention uh, with all of my towns really, uh, with how I have these elevated freeways, 
um, as we start getting into probably the 2100s, uh, depending on how quickly these start expanding when I really start uh, running time forward. Um, as these cities start getting really big, which I hope they do, uh, I may start putting in some, uh, uh, yeah, some extra freeways, like an outer belt type of thing, uh, just to make it look a little cooler and a little more realistic. But we kind of need to wait for the cities to expand a bit more before we start uh, doing all that. And we need to get some more money. Um, as you can see, we have 56 million right now, but I do have a hundred million dollar loan. I uh, took out the max loan amount while I was rebuilding Margit because I wasn't exactly sure how much it was going to cost. Uh, but it only ended up costing about a uh, little under 40 million. It hadn't grown up too big, so I didn't need to destroy too many buildings. Um, and then it's actually pretty cheap to place road and buildings and things. The uh, train station was one of the more expensive areas. Uh, but that's fine, we still got plenty of money to play with and we've got some trains we need to buy in this episode. And uh, I don't think I've really done anything else besides uh, rebuild Margit, uh, which will be in the time lapse at the end of this episode. But I did go ahead and uh, continue our passenger and freight lines down to Margit. You can see the uh, purple and green here. So those are already set up and good to go. So what we need to do is come up to our transfer yard and we're going to buy some new trains. So if we come down here and look at our train line, we've got the TP Southwest. So that's just a Mallard and two of the big uh, BC4s. Now I'm not sure if we're going to continue using the Mallard at this point. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have uh, available um, for engines. So if we look at the Mallard, it's uh, 851,000 a year, top speed of 145, which I think it's hitting. Um, down on this uh, area down here, if I can get some of this out of the way. On this big uh, area coming down around the mountain peak, I think we may hit about 140 down here. Um, so yeah, I mean that's something to keep in mind because we could take advantage of higher top speed engines. So we've got the Nohab, but that's more of a uh, freight locomotive. Um, we may start dabbling in the electric engines, uh, however they cost a lot to maintain and there's usually not much of a um, advantage to using them. I think they weigh a bit less. Yeah, they, they typically weigh less than uh, the other engines and they have decent top speeds, especially uh, like this one here with 150. Um, but you can see it costs one half million dollars a year. And right now we're just not making that much money uh, to really justify spending so much per year on an engine. Because something like the Nohab here, um, it's got lots of power, it weighs a lot, uh, 120 top speed, but it only costs almost a third of the, uh, the E10 here. Or even the E41, it's almost a million a year. Has taint sit and it has the same top speed. Uh, so yeah, the electric trains are a little odd. I don't care for them. Um, I do like the look of a lot of them, and I do want to use them at some point. But right now, I don't think we can uh, really afford them per se. So if we come down this way, we've got some new engines, uh, mainly variants of the uh, BR47, and of course, we had just bought a few. Uh, Actually, I think I only bought one. If I scroll over here, we can see real quick. Oh yeah, there it is. So we bought one uh, BR-37, and then I think like a year or two later, yeah, one year later, the uh, 47s become available. Now, the problem with them is, um, yes, they have a bit higher top speed. They have almost twice the power, but they also wash, yeah, they also cost twice as much per year to maintain, uh, which again, that's a pretty significant amount for a single engine. And uh, these are all just repaints, they all have the same stats for the uh, BR-47. 
but once we start using these it'll be really nice to have different uh, paint variants just to make things look a little cooler uh, a little more varied uh, and then if we come down a bit further yeah we have our rail buses uh, not really going to use those for the main line but we do have the Einheitst wagon too that I think that's how you would say that Einheitst wagon Einheitst wagon something like that uh, too <clears throat> and it holds 21 people whereas our BC4s Oh, I guess it, they hold 20, uh, so it's only one person more, costs quite a bit more, but it's that top speed. So if we had something that uh, could go 140, this would be a bit better, but uh, I'm not sure if we're going to need that right now. Well, it looks like the 37 does get up to 140, so we may actually use those, uh, plus they'll look pretty cool. And then we also got this. The uh, Rabdi 1212 Mirage. Uh, yeah, Mirage. <clears throat> it holds 64 people, 125 top speed. Uh, 1.57 million per year. That's pretty cool. And this has uh, the um, engine and cars integrated into one long unit. So that's something we may take a look at. That would actually look pretty cool. Actually, we may put something like that down here on the Southwick Alton line um, just to get rid of those rail buses so we've got three rail buses put together right now but if we were to uh, use that uh, let me come back to it here if we were to use the Rabd uh, Mirage uh, yeah I think we could replace it let me see if I... So those are 50000 a year. That's 1.5 million. So never mind. The rail buses are uh, <laughs> much, much cheaper. So I think we'll be keeping those for a while. But yeah, so I think we may just use the BR-37 uh, instead of the Mallard. Let's see. So it does 140, 557. Mallard does 145, but it costs almost twice twice as much per year. 102,000 kilograms, 105. Just a little bit less power, more tractive effort. I think we're going to start uh, using the 37s for our passenger lines. Yeah, I'll have to come back to these electrics and uh, maybe play around with them off screen <clears throat> and figure out if they're viable or not. But yeah, so I think we're going to go ahead and get a Class 37. And we're going to throw a couple of these wagons on it. I think two for now may be okay. Let me see how many people are waiting. So for our Southwest line, we've got 17 people waiting. Uh, those can hold 21 a piece, so that's fine. If we come down here, I don't think there's hardly anyone. There's, okay, so there's 18 there. <clears throat> if we start coming around this way, there's going to be more people because of how long it takes for the train to get down here. So that's got 51 waiting, so that's quite a few, and then we don't have that running yet. Uh, so I think adding just one additional train will be okay for now. Let's go ahead and throw it on. Uh, train passenger southwest Now I do want to come in here and take a look at it as it rolls out Those are pretty nice looking wagons I wish I could look at a lock to uh, different cars on the trains and follow them instead of just the engine but that's okay yeah so pretty nice looking little wagons and uh, I don't know what else um, needs done right now I think we may need another train on our southwest uh, freight line that would go, I think it's with this guy, no, that's Southwick Bolton. 
Um, but yeah, I think we may need another train on the Southwest Freight Line. But I come back in here real quick. Uh, train Freight, yeah, so the Southwest, it's got two on it right now. <clears throat> well, first of all, we're going to have to... Uh, oh, okay, okay, there it is. So, actually, the Mallard's only 18 years old. Uh, but I think we may replace it because it's got the older wagons on it. So it's not as good. And we have uh, a BR-37 on on that line as well. So I think we may go ahead and replace this. So we're just going to ride along with this train for a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can set the replacement here while we do that. So let's get a PR-37. I need this back open for just a moment. Wait, if I go over here, yeah, okay. Uh, so let's see, we've got five oil wagons. Eleven good wagons. And then... Six state cars, I think. Yep, six. Now, it makes the train 326 meters long, which is a bit longer than our platforms. Uh, but I think it's, it's uh, going to be okay. It shouldn't stick out too far. Um, if it's a problem, I may need to move the uh, lights I've added at the end of our platforms at the freight stations. Uh, just to make sure... Uh, that uh, whatever train is behind it will actually pull up to the end of the platform instead of the uh, train being too long and then covering the signal causing the train to then stop at the next sing signal behind that one which uh, could mess up some of the uh, timing for the trains and things so I'll just have to keep an eye on that but yeah so we've got a new train there set up and uh, let's see, so automatic replacing on, and let's put this down. Oh, actually we have a replace now button, so that's really uh, nice. Um, except I don't want this one year old train to be replaced, so I probably shouldn't hit that. So let's just put this down 25% and then that should make the, uh, yep, so right there. So with the usability patch you can see now, uh, it's colored that red, which means it's ready for replacement based on what I set in here. So that's really, really nice. Uh, that makes things uh, extremely easy to know what's going on now. So now that we've got that done, we just need to wait for that to get replaced and then I can turn auto replacement back off. Oops. But yeah, so just uh, been cruising down through the valley there into uh, whatever city that is. I can't remember right now for some reason. Uh, oh yeah, Southway. Oh, and so now we just got another little passenger, electric passenger that's either a tram or one of the integrated engine and uh, passenger car trains. But it's the BE 4 6 Mirage. Alright, so there we go. You can see our train just upgraded, or uh, got replaced I guess. So we can go back to replacement and turn it off. And let's just go ahead and clear that. So yeah, this new workflow for uh, vehicle replacements and uh, different line management things are really nice. And I really like what they did with it. Oops, I keep... Uh Clicking the wrong thing there, getting off it. But yeah, so like you can see right there, that just made that made that much nicer, and real fast to do. I really like the fact that they're still working on the game and making it better. But yeah, we're just gonna, I think, continue. Oh man, I I keep right clicking on accident. Um, we're just gonna continue watching this train for a little bit. Uh, because, like I said, not too much more to uh, do in this episode, other than just get into the time-lapse at the end. 
Oh, and uh, I don't know if you noticed back at the uh, transfer station, <clears throat> uh, there's still a problem with some of the textures. They're like this purplish color. And it seems that it's just a problem with the mod or a couple mods because there's also a um, modern uh, truck station that's got like a concrete texture. And the texture is just like missing now along with a few others. Uh, so they just show up as this purple color and there's nothing I can seem to do about it. Uh, I tried uninstalling and reinstalling the mod, uh, clearing my texture cache, and it's still there. So I have to assume it's a problem with the mod itself. Um, I guess the author must have deleted something, or I'm not sure what. But uh, yeah, so that's I guess just going to be stuck like that. It's a little bit of an eyesore, uh, but we'll just have to live with it, I guess. So this is a pretty cool little shot right here. We've got the elevated freeway, which is a little bumpy, but whatever, coming through there. We've got, hopefully all this will fill in with houses and it'll look pretty cool. This little mountain-like village. And our train our train lines are running along the uh, ridge of this mountain. We've got the nice little river down there. We've got the rolling hills with a few mountains off in the distance. It's actually really scenic through here. It's really nice. I may need to plant some more trees along here, uh, just to sort of beautify it a bit. But this is a pretty nice little view right there here. Now we've got our BR-37 BR freight train passing us here, which is pretty cool. Looks very nice. Getting up to about 90 kilometers an hour here on this downhill part. I actually thought we were going a bit faster than this by now. Uh, I guess it's because there's a bit of an uphill um, departure from uh, Hingham back there. But then it's pretty much all downhill to Margate. Now that said, waiting for a free path, but I don't think the other train... Oh yeah, actually it is a little bit close uh, ahead of us. I didn't think it was quite that close that we would be getting the waiting for free path uh, message up here. But now it's pulled into the station down there so we'll have a clear path into the passenger side of the terminal. As soon as the back end of the train gets around. But yeah, I guess, uh, well mainly because we were being held up by that train a little bit. We're only just now getting to about 110 kilometers an hour as we're coming into the station. Uh, out of the possible, I think it was 140 top speed for this. Yeah, 140 top speed. Um, it would be really nice to hit that top speed, but I'm not sure if we really will. So that'll be interesting to know if that was worth it. But yeah, this is a pretty nice little terminal area. I like how it turned out. The parking lot and then the little bus area um, where our trams will go. So now that we've ridden on that a bit, I do want to look at our trams that should be running around here somewhere. Let me see if I can uh, find one. Oh, there it is. Or no, that's one of our buses. <clears throat> if I zoom out here, there's one. So we've got these uh, kind of ugly looking little uh, trams. I can't wait to get some of the uh, the ones from later on in the game. They should look pretty nice. But uh, yeah, so they're just kind of this odd yellow color. I, I could probably change it actually. Um, let's go in here. No, I think I have to do it for the whole line. So if I open the line. Yeah, so vehicles color. Oh, that's not too bad being able to change that whole bottom section. So maybe we'll just go with a nice blue. Um, orange isn't too bad either. Maybe a different shade of yellow. Oh no. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll just go with the orange. That looks kind of nice. And we'll have a orange line just to go with it. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how 
uh, how well these tram lines work. I may have to change these roads to turn the uh, tram line areas into bus lanes just to keep traffic out of the way if it starts getting a little bit too bottlenecked. Um, but it's going to be a little bit before this builds back up to anything significant. So we'll just have to revisit this. Oh, and then we've got... Uh, yeah, so because we've got where the ground built up, uh, and this isn't elevated through here, of course we're going to have the stupid city auto builder doing weird things like that. I was hoping it would ignore, it would not do that. And then it's also going to build little roads. Uh, I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. I may have to rebuild this little area um, and make sure it's elevated through here to stop stuff like that. Then yeah, so we've got like buildings on the off ramp, which I guess isn't too bad. Uh, it's a little unrealistic, but like whatever. And yeah, see the game's just gonna keep doing stupid things like that. Um, let me come in here real quick and see if I can find. Uh, I did have little fences. I thought it was in that. Uh, yeah, these guys. So if I take these, first of all, need to destroy these houses. And level the terrain out a bit. Alright, so if I take these, I should be able to prevent things from building. So these don't need to be perfect, they're just here to uh, prevent the auto builder from doing stupid things. Okay, so hopefully that will prevent anything stupid from happening here. Let's uh, go ahead just real quick on the... First of all, I need to pay off some of this loan, I think, so that we don't have uh, all that money coming out every month for loan payment. And uh, just wanted to take a quick look at our lines, see how we're doing profit-wise. So Corsham 3 is not doing too great. Uh, those are all pretty low losses just because they're small little bus lines. Oh, now something we do have, uh, we got new, which I want to turn off these auto replaces real quick. before uh, they start buying new vehicles again because we did unlock a new freight vehicle okay so if I just grab a depot somewhere uh, yeah I've got a couple up here so we had the Opal Blitz for a very long time, uh, it unlocked in 1935 so we've been using them for about 31 years now. But in 65 we unlocked the Man 19304. Uh, so we go from 11 capacity to 16, it also can do 80 kilometers an hour, it weighs quite a bit more, has more power, uh, and then it costs about twice as much per year. But also the loading speed goes up to uh, times four. So it's a pretty nice little vehicle. And I want to make sure that all of our lines are set to, well, first of all, we should probably figure out so that's 18 years. Uh, those, of course, were basically just replaced. Those are going to need to replace soon. Okay, so it looks like we're almost, uh, uh, it looks like we're pretty much in a replacement cycle right now. 
Most things are hitting about 20 years old and starting to get replaced. So we're just going to go ahead and whoops, set that as our new replacement, turn it on, leave it 100% and quickly do that for all of these. Now I'm not going to bother uh, upgrading the Wincanton lines because we may be going over there and uh, doing something with it in the next episode or two. Um, because right now, uh, since we're pretty low on money, it's going to take quite a bit to rebuild Dulverton uh, and especially get Rumford set up with its massive transfer yard. Um, so. Uh, in another episode or two, I'm actually going to start working over here. I'm not sure if I'm going to start up here at Wincanton or possibly uh, down here by Dartmouth. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start working on the east side of the map. Build it up a bit and then start making a connection towards Rumford. And some uh, sometime down the line, we'll just have a massive like one or two part episode possibly. Uh, where we build up our... Uh, the whole Rumford area and uh, connect the two sides of the map together. Try and make it a kind of a special occasion. Sort of like how the uh, Transcontinental Railroad was in the US um, where they finally came together and met. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this episode other than the time lapse that's coming up. Uh, I still got to plan out what I'm going to be doing here in, for Harrow. Uh, it may actually, I may use Harrow sort of as a, um, a, uh, guinea pig for a ring road or a outer belt, whatever you want to call it. So a, uh, freeway going all the way around it. It's a little mountainous around here, so I may need to flatten it out a bit. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice big open area where I can play around and the town's not too big yet. So I may play around and make this uh, a bit different than some of my other towns so far before connecting it up to our uh, freight or uh, our uh, rail area out this way. But yeah, so that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, hit that like button. Uh, subscribe if you want to. Share this with your friends. And hopefully I will see all of you in the next episode.